Okay, good morning everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to hand over to Graham Duxbury, who is the CEO at Duxbury Networking. He's going to give a brief introduction and then we will get going. Thanks so much. Okay, well, good morning and welcome and thank you. Huge thanks to all of you for joining us this morning. Um, as Azaria said, I'm Graham Duxbury, co-founder of Duxbury Networking. 37 years ago, we started the company, which was in 1984. Uh, on the call, on the webinar, we have Alzira Queros, who's our National Marketing Manager at Duxbury, and Toby von Skalkweg, our South African Netgear Product Manager. Uh, after the presentation, they will do um, a Q&A session with all of you. And finally, it is my huge, great pleasure to welcome Richard Yonker, the Netgear VP for Business Development for AV over IP for the EMEA region. And the two of us have been doing business together for a long, long time. So uh, with that introduction, over to you guys. Thank you very much, uh, Graham. Uh, we're celebrating something special, uh, and that is that we're in business for 25 years. Uh, I've been with uh, Netgear for 15 years, but Netgear, um, right from the start, when it spun out of uh, Bay Networks, uh, started doing business with, uh, with Graham Duxbury. So I really want to thank you for all that you've done. And it's great that after 25 years, we keep on finding new opportunities. Uh, and today we're going to discuss um, a huge opportunity, one that may be even bigger than all the other things we've done so far. So it's pretty exciting. And um, I want to thank uh, Graeme, uh, you for um, the collaboration, for the introduction, and for the opportunity to present uh, for the uh, community in South Africa um, a new technology that is taking the world by storm, uh, AV over IP. And thanks Toby and Alzira for organizing and uh, please help out. Uh, during the webinar, of course, uh, if anyone has questions, uh, there's a chat um, that we will uh, be responding to and uh, Toby and Alzira will help me answer the questions that are uh, arising during uh, the webinar. So thanks for that. So a little bit about Netgear. Um, it was part of Bay Networks, and when Bay Networks in 1996 was bought by Nortel, the uh, founder of the Department uh, for Small Business Networking, Patrick Lowe, uh, took the company private and brought it to the Stock Exchange uh, public offering in 2003. And since then, we've been active in a couple of fields, and all of those technologies were selling through Duxbury exclusively in South Africa. Uh, consumer Wi-Fi, modems and gateways, uh, 4G and 5G, mobile hotspots, a business switching, what we're uh, going to discuss today, and business Wi-Fi. About myself, I'm with Netgear 15 years. Uh, I started in Benelux, then did a few years in um, emerging markets, flew a lot over the place. Um, really, um, one of the highlights was visiting uh, Duxbury and uh, visiting uh, Joburg and Cape Town and Windhoek. Um, that was great. Um, after that, I moved to the US. I've been working in product management for six years. And since COVID started, I'm back in the Netherlands and I'm now handling um, the AV over IP uh, business uh, development in EMEA together with the salespeople in um, the various countries we're developing um, together with the Pro AV uh, channel um, a transition to a new technology so that, that's what we're going to talk about today so what is AV over IP it's the one slide about definitions it's audio visual over internet protocol which is really two things it is the transmission of audio visual data sound video over a network and that second part is um, relatively new because there are standard technologies for audio video like HDMI, HD base T. There are audio standards going back 70 years that we're now replacing by packet switching. And that's, that's the essence. That's the meat of AV over IP. The fact that you translate anything and do it over ethernet. Now, here's a comparison. Um, traditionally, you would switch video over a matrix switch and you would have to handle control signals if they're not part of that video signal differently. So that would require a lot of cabling, a lot of equipment to get that all 
from the source to the target. And if you have multiple sources and multiple targets, it gets very complicated. With an IP switch, as we know from the IT industry, you can really connect anything as long as it outputs an Ethernet signal. And all that you do is you transport, you know, network packets. And because of all the uh, technology that is now available, there is no end to the scale that this network can have. We've been doing networks now with a thousand endpoints. That is possible. And uh, I think that's one of the main reasons that technically AV over IP is interesting for pro AV integrators. There's also a financial aspect. It's simply a lot more affordable. If you talk the highest resolution that's commonly accepted currently, which is 4K with 60 frames per second, the price of doing this over IP is a quarter of doing it over a traditional matrix switch. So we declare the matrix switch is dead. Long live the new emperor, which is video over IP. So there, there are a few uh, ways that you can do video over IP, and sometimes people hesitate making the choice. There are trends, particularly in 2020 and 2021, that drive the AV over IP adoption. And of course, I had to say it, COVID forces companies to rethink the way they communicate with their customers, with their employees. So they're retooling offices. Every meeting room becomes a video conferencing room, which is in 2021, the single biggest driver for AV over IP adoption. There's more, the cost is definitely, um, uh, you know, an important decision point. But now we see that the cost of AV over IP is getting lower and lower, while the technology in uh, AV itself without network technology is not evolving. So it's a mix of new protocols, innovation, you know, something that Silicon Valley has always been good at, make it easier, make it more affordable, make it easier to scale up and scale out, while the traditional technology is is static, it's not changing anymore. And that really drives a lot of the adoption. And then video resolution, uh, thanks to the uh, screen manufacturers, we went from 1K to 4K. We're now at 4K HDR, and we'll be going to 8K very soon. And that's something you can do with traditional technology, uh, not because of the performance limitation, and also not because of the very high cost. So we're uniquely positioned now to drive AV over IP. And um, yeah, there are, there are a couple of bonus uh, technologies, I would say, that are from the AV over IP natively. And um, gaming, streaming, uh, things like Twitch or uh, YouTube gaming are AV over IP native. There is no traditional technology involved there. So the only way to do it, particularly if you want to integrate it with other forms of video, is doing AV over IP. And same goes for social media streaming. Uh, why would you do that on tra traditional technology when the end result needs to go over the internet? So what do you need to know when you want to do AV over IP? And assuming we're talking to pro AV specialists here, the only thing that you would need to know extra is uh, network fundamentals. And we designed a course for that. Um, takes you about an hour to, to get you uh, into the fundamentals of AV over IP by using the network terminology. Um, it's here on a website called netgear.academy. Registration is for free. Spend an hour learning. And if you want, there are follow-up courses to dive deeper. And Netgear can help you as well with tailor-made courses specifically to your application. So that's uh, so far about the technology, there are 10 applications that we think are the top 10, um, as we observe as, as Netgear. And uh, I'd like to go over these applications. Those are the ones that drive the revenue for integrators at this moment. And the first one is Crestron, is the market leader. They have an AV over IP, one gigabit solution called NVX. Worldwide, they did 350,000 installations of NVX. With that, they're by far market leader. And we're happy to announce that we're not only supporting 
this application, we're working together with Crestron. We have been certified for Crestron NVX one gig uh, AV over IP solution. The second one is Harman AMX. Uh, Harman is uh, acquired by Samsung a few years ago. And under the Harman brand are many uh, known audio and video brands together. Um, AMX is their platform. And um, we're also very happy to announce we're working with Harman together so that um, you can implement an AMX solution with a certified Netgear switch. QSC, the third one. Fuses is their platform and we're also supporting that. If you go and say, what is the fourth one? Well, there's no clear fourth one. There is a lot of video conferencing happening, um, particularly in the last two years, of course. And uh, I think Zoom and Teams are the highlights here. And then to a lesser extent, Google Meet and, and WebEx. And there are some other manufacturers there. If it's purely AV over IP that needs to be done for Zoom or Teams, we are the manufacturer of choice. So we're working directly with uh, Zoom and with Microsoft on uh, designs of meeting rooms, or if it's a large building, it could be up to 50 meeting rooms that we're connecting, daisy chaining with our switches. So a lot of uh, one gig video over IP solutions and a uh, special welcome. And um, I think they're on the call today are the people from Alphatron, a South African video over IP brand. Um, uh, we're working together, Alphatron is working with our switches um, to see if this is a, a great fit. So they have a one gig uh, video over IP solution. And as you see here, they're uh, surrounded by a couple of other very large global vendors. So, so it's great to have a South African uh, vendor uh, in this space. Um, the new hero here is a video standard called NDI. A network device interface. It's from a company called NewTek. It's quickly been adopted by the big Japanese video firms like Sony, Panasonic and Canon, an Australian one called BirdDoc and there's a whole bunch more. What they do is send 1K or 4K video over one gigabit networks. They use PoE to feed the camera and the PTZ, the pan tilt zoom signal, also goes over the network cable. So one cable does it all. Now, Panasonic is the market leader here. They're uh, also the sponsor of the uh, Olympic Games. So anything that was pen tilt zoom from different angles on the uh, Olympics was done over Panasonic cameras. A lot of them were using the NDI protocol. It's exciting because it is native video over IP and it's a lot more affordable than traditional broadcast cameras. So with that, Netgear is also uh, facilitating video over IP in the broadcast space. Audio, um, the main protocol here is Dante. It's from an Australian company called Audinate. And Dante has also launched a audio video protocol called Dante AV, which is also AV over one gig. So we're all supporting these protocols. Audio video bridge, AVB, is from an alliance called AVNU. AVNU and uh, is mainly used in the professional audio, rental, staging, studio space, uh, companies like uh, Biamp, DMB Audio. We're supporting that. That requires a license uh, that you can buy separately from Netgear to uh, load on the switches. You know, it's a, a one-off action you need to do. It takes a few seconds and then your switch is AVB uh, compliant. AES67 is another audio protocol popular in the broadcast space. We're supporting that. And finally, SDVOE, Software Defined Video over Ethernet. It describes 4K60 at the highest 4x4x4 quality over 10 gigabit networking. Uh, Netgear is one of the founders of the alliance that does this SDVOE. And we founded that together with Christie Digital and Sony. And here are a few names that are active there. So if you want 4K60 with zero latency, SDVOE is the way to go. It's more affordable than traditional technology, more expandable. And um, you can trust Netgear as founder of this alliance to be the one that can transport your signals in the best possible way. So why do AV integrators like yourself want to work with Netgear? Uh, there's a couple of reasons. 
we're not a competitive threat because we don't do installations, we don't do distribution, we're not an integrator, we don't have our own video applications, right? We are the plumber. We transport whatever you want to be transporting, right? Just give us the signal, we are the pipe, and we'll, we'll be moving it for you. Our products work and they get massively recommended. We're working with over 200 AV over IP manufacturers now to get our products certified. And of course, we learn a lot from them. With that knowledge, we harden our products and we have a lot of experience in helping you design AV over IP networks. We'll talk a little bit more in detail on what that means. We are responsive, we're approachable, helpful and flexible. Well, I'm here. Um, we have a 24-7 free uh, design service. All you have to do is email us at proevdesign at netgear.com. I'll uh, show you a slide with that email address later. And we respond immediately. Whatever time, uh, whatever the AV over IP problem is, we'll help you design a network for that. And finally, our pricing is very friendly. As, uh, Duxbury can uh, testify to that. We've been in business for 25 years selling in um, the major markets in Europe and the US, but also in South Africa and outside South Africa. Um, we'll always have the right product for the right price. Margins are uh, good for uh, even for AV, where margin requirement is a little bit higher than IT. We know that. So we facilitate that and we help with free training and free support. Now, all those four things are not to be found at Cisco. Right? We, we can help you with this because this is our way of competing with other giant networking companies. And the feedback's been overwhelming. From the certified vendors so far, there's 31, and I hope to be adding Alphatron to this list very soon. Um, and we'll, we're working with, um, as I said, almost 200 companies now to certify their products. And the reason is um, we want to make it easy for you to use the AV brands that you prefer, you know, mix and match, multiple brands, and all that the switch has to do is correctly transport those signals from where they come from to where they need to go without packet loss, right? That's, that is, I think, the measure of great quality. It just does what you want it to do without you compromising on the uh, AV brands that you want to use. So there are two camps in uh, AV over IP. I mentioned one gig um, and 10 gig. So roughly you can say one gigabit is all the audio and it is compressed video over IP, while 10 gigabit is less compressed or not compressed at all. Um, it's a bit more expensive, but you have the highest quality then because there's less compression and less latency because there's less decompression. Also, if you want to uh, gather a few of these video sources and uplink them, you will need to make sure that this goes line rate, right, non-blocking, which means if you have 10 1 gigabit video streams, you would need to uplink it with 10 gigabit. If you have 10 gigabit streams, 10 of those are together already 100 gigabit. So we are having an infrastructure in place here that enables that to make your whole video network non-blocking and line rate. So we do support all forms of AV over IP. We were not able to find any video over IP technology that we can't get to work. 200 different vendors. So how does it work? This is, um, um, and, and, uh, let's say, a depiction of our 96 port 10 gig switch, um, uh, the flagship for AV over IP. And look what we're doing here. We're connecting all kinds of sources, whether they're one gig or 10 gig copper, or maybe 10 gig over fiber, one gig over fiber. And uh, we're all gathering them in the switch and then sending them with the help of an AV over IP controller that tells us what needs to go where to the targets, which could be touch screens, 4K displays, projectors, video walls, televisions, or maybe it has to be sent over the internet using SRT or another protocol, which means you can really mix and match anything AV over IP as a source and as a target. This particular switch allows you to change the port configuration 
because the 96 ports are 12 times an eight port module. And you can decide what those eight ports are, 10 gig copper, 10 gig copper PoE, or maybe fiber, or maybe you want to uplink with 40 gig fiber ports. So you can just swap those port cards and build your own switch. And this is the biggest compliment we get. It's almost like Netgear gets me a personally designed switch. Uh, because we do have so many different form factors for you to choose from. So what is the best practice? And we'll talk a little bit about um, the settings needed, but we can also say there, there are some design standards, right? You can't use an existing infrastructure because it may be already oversubscribed, it may be full. So we always advise to create a separate AV network that you may uplink to an existing network, you know, for internet access or to um, uh, transport signals elsewhere. But in principle, the switching of AV happens on a separate uh, network. Um, and that you know, means that you have to count the number of sources and calculate what is the maximum throughput that I need the bandwidth. And our design advises to use a 10 gig backbone if you really use multiple one gig sources that need to go somewhere else. If the traffic stays on one switch, obviously that's not necessary. For example, you have four cameras to film something at a school or a house of worship or an office, maybe video conferencing, and then it can be done on one switch, particularly if you use link aggregation to create a bit more bandwidth if you want to go to another switch. It's really about your requirement. And then, you know, what is driving this, right? And this is um, a design fundamental. Is it about quality, latency, scaling? And yeah, people think it's latency. No, it's not latency. Is it the quality of the codec? No, it is not the quality of the codec. What matters most in switch selection is bandwidth. That is what drives the success of a well-designed AV over IP network. And the next thing is multicast. Multicast is, let's say, in between unicast, where a source sends one six signal that goes to one target and broadcast. Broadcast is one source sends a signal to anyone, everywhere, like an unmanaged switch does that. Now, if you would do unicast, you cannot send a signal to multiple sources. If you do broadcast, you will flood the network very quickly. So you have to do something in between, which is called multicast, which is, well, you could basically say um, a lot of times per second, I decide where this source needs to go. And I manage that with IGMP, that's a protocol. And I make sure that IGMP, which is a, uh, it's rather technical, but this is the protocol that manages where the traffic goes that you send from a source. It may have to traverse over different switches or not. And it's important to manage that well, because otherwise, as I said, you can uh, easily flood the network. So bandwidth is uh, defined as megabits or gigabits per second. We do have 100 gigabit switches, the M4500 series, that you would need if you have many sources. Even if you have one gig sources, if you have many of them, that could be cameras at a school, for example, um, you would easily get into a high bandwidth uh, situation. And you, you really have to take care of that in a uh, uh, carefully crafted network design. So a multiple switch installation, the question is, how much bandwidth do I need? Is it four gigabit from four different encoders going to four different decoders? Or is it two gigabit if only two encoders sent to two decoders? Well, the answer is it's two gigabit, right? So this is how you can craft um, an interconnect between switches for AV over IP by thinking multicast. What is it that I sent? What is it that I sent the data to? And then I calculate how much bandwidth I need for that. So in an AV over IP deployment, you can have a single switch. This is a uh, fiber switch you see here, with the 24 ports. Um, in this case, we say you, you should be able to take a switch out of the box from this uh, AV over IP suitable series. Uh, you figure out, is this copper, fiber, or PoE? But then the switch needs to boot up. 
and needs to immediately start transporting your signal without problems, right? So that's what we call, it needs to work out of the box. So this is an example from Panasonic with um, a media server and several sources going into the switch, going directly to the targets. If you would not program the switch correctly, it wouldn't transport like here, right? Signal goes in, it doesn't come out. So our switches for video over IP are configured out of the box to immediately transport the signal. So you would get immediately the right form of multicast. Uh, that's something special. Nobody else has that. And um, uh, when you uh, then start controlling it, uh, you have already a working network. All you have to do is say, hey, I want this source to go to that target, right? Whether it's a video screen or projectors or multiple screens, um, that's an application that you then connect to one of the Ethernet ports. If you do a multiple switch deployment um, and you do unicast, there's no problem, right? One transmitter, one receiver, that's okay. If you have multiple transmitters and they're broadcasting, that would mean that the data from these transmitters goes everywhere across multiple switches. Well, that gets messy you may run into trouble. So what we have designed is a better implementation uh, of IGMP, the protocol that, that manages this, and it automatically keeps the data that needs to stay on the switch because the receiver is also connected to that same switch. It would keep the, the traffic there. So it doesn't traverse over the spine switch to another leaf switch or uh, creates a broadcast storm. That's very important. Uh, lots of the video over IP protocols use protocols like MDNS and Bonjour. If you let that go out of control, you will bring down the network. An example is one 14 year old with a phone or a laptop that runs VLC can start broadcasting and can bring down an entire campus network. That's how this protocol is designed. So you will have to put measures in place to stop that. And we've programmed that in our M4000 series of switches as IGMP plus. So we make AV over IP setups simple, um, affordable as well by committing to the standards, right? So that we don't deviate, we don't do proprietary stuff. So we either use open standards or we announce we support manufacturer standards. And both um, the M4250 series, layer two, as well as the layer three switches, M4300 and M4500, are configured for professional audio video and multicast right out of the box, which means zero touch configuration. That saves you time, that saves you money, that saves you headache because, um, well, you just boot up the switch and it's working. And then you can, you know, maybe uh, add multiple protocols and configure the switch to drive multiple protocols, maybe over multiple switches. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what's needed there. So there are a couple of things that we standard put on our switches. IGMP snooping is enabled on VLAN 1, for example, for SDVOE, that's necessary. Uh, IGMP querier enabled, VLAN 1, fast leave, and uh, we drop unregistered, unregistered multicast flooding, right? So unregistered packets get cut out, so you don't flood the network. It may be a misconfiguration. Maybe you want to try a broadcast setting, but the switch will make sure that the network does not choke. So we support... A yeah. We're on our 30 minute mark, just so you know, okay? Okay, thank you. So the AVB is um, uh, a protocol for audio. So it's the only thing that requires a license to be loaded. So this is an example of uh, how you can do that on the M4250 series. We do have three series of switches. The M4250 series is for any one gig application, which means all audio applications and all video over IP one gig applications. M4300 series supports both one gig and 10 gig. And then to aggregate, we have the M4500 series that does 10 gig all the way up to 100 gig. The 4250 series specifically designed for AV over IP, which means these switches do not look like an IT product, right? Like a data center or a rack product. 
uh, they can be mounted with the cables to the front or the cables to the back. And when you have the cables to the back, you will see the LED indicators on the front. That looks very nice, you know, so it blends in with your audio or video equipment. We have a special video over IP interface on the M4250, which is the single most attractive thing. I mean, we get a lot of questions about it. A very excited uh, pro AV community. Um, and let me talk you quickly through what it shows here. We've loaded two profiles on this switch. One is for Dante audio, and the other one is for Crestron NVX. So we load the Dante profile on ports one until eight, and then we connect the Dante equipment to that. Then we load the NVX profile on port nine until 18, which is really a couple of clicks in the user interface where you literally assign the ports to the profile. And now we have a working switch implementation with Dante audio and NVX video, which you can literally do with a couple of clicks. So this is taking the world by storm. It's very, very popular as well with the integrators as with the manufacturers that recommend these switches because it just makes their product better as well. As you can see, we have profile templates for the most uh, popular, at least the top 10, uh, video over IP protocols. Uh, for NDI, we're going to introduce NDI 4 and NDI 5 this weekend, a new firmware that will enable those two protocols. So in um, our Pro-AV uh, product line, the M4300 series has a flagship that I mentioned, uh, which has port cards, so this is a unique design. So you can go start with eight ports and work all the way up to 96 ports over time. Uh, you can buy it as an empty chassis already half filled, and you have copper, fiber, and uh, PoE uh, port cards uh, all the way up to 40 gig. The M4500 series is our top of the rack solution, uh, 100 gig, um, really driving uh, the large scale implementation. And we've done installations with, for example, 300 sources and 300 targets. Think about universities, maybe a mall. Um, the goal line technology as used in football and uh, during the Olympic games runs on Netgear switches where they use these switches to aggregate all the uh, signals from the cameras that record if the ball was in or the ball was out, if it was a goal or it was not a goal. So we have a dedicated Pro AV engineering services team. It's 14 people working worldwide. This is the email address, proavdesign at netgear.com. Ask us any question, we respond immediately. We don't charge for this. All we want to do is become the most helpful switch vendor for your AV over IP implementations. We commit to have a comprehensive portfolio or roadmap. We have 24 seven technical support available, pre-sales and post-sales. Our executive management uh, is committed to driving success here. Um, we're rolling this out worldwide, an extensive channel program, um, lifetime tech support, lifetime hardware warranty, and next business day replacement. Uh, so with that, um, are there any questions? Uh, we actually have our first question that has just come through. Uh, the question is, so does the switch do the matrix switching without a third party matrix switcher? Yeah, what, what you would do is you connect sources that, uh, that can either be traditional AV equipment, let's say they output HDMI or SDI, and you would use converters to make that Ethernet. That would be one way of doing it. It's very popular, speci specifically if it's uh, a very high resolution 10 gig over IP. Um, you would use these converters. So SDVOE is one of the protocols, but there are many. There are also sources that are AV over IP native, where, uh, again, there's no need for a switcher here. The product itself would output already and signal directly over Ethernet. For example, an NDI camera outputs over Ethernet. It can do that over USB, it can do that over HDMI or SDI, but in this case, you would pick the Ethernet connector, plug it straight into the switch, and there you go, you're done. So it's way easier. So with that, the Ethernet switch is replacing the matrix switch, but on the endpoints and the sources, you would uh, of course, arrange 
that they are Ethernet, because otherwise it doesn't work, right? So you need to have Ethernet sources, Ethernet targets put in place, and you can use uh, converters. If, if you want to know which converters, uh, happy to schedule a call um, for any specific application. Uh, we can help you with that. So our manufacturers that we work with um, are doing a lot of that because it helps you use your existing infrastructure. For example, yesterday we spoke to the national television station in Pakistan. They want to go AV over IP, but I have all this SDI equipment. What do we do? Well, you buy converters to convert SDI to NDI, for example, to switch that over Ethernet. It's very affordable, high quality, right? There is no quality loss. There is no latency introduced, and you don't have to buy a matrix switch. So that, that's that's exciting and very attractive for people that have invested already in uh, in equipment. Does that answer the question? I'm sure. So it's interesting. Just, just okay, to yes, it does. Okay, try Just to confirm, I mean, so the M4250 is more designed for for one switch, um, small in, in installations. Biggest difference between the M4250 M4300, just to touch base on that. Yeah, so the M4250 is a uh, mainly one gigabit uh, solution. There's a multi-gig version, one of the 11 models, and there are 10 gig uplink versions. So it's really intended to build switch environments for one gig video over IP solution. That doesn't mean it stays one gig, it could go up to 10 gig. And we have an aggregation switch in the M4250 series with 16 ports. So with that, you can say it can um, together consolidate 160 one gig sources, right? You can put that together and then it's still line rate. Uh, it's a layer two solution. If you want to go layer three or you want to go higher by uh, going 10 gig video over IP, then you need the M4300 series of switches. So you could say that in eight out of the 10 video over IP deployments, you can probably use the M4250 um, only when you introduce higher speeds than 10 gig or you have multiple 10 gig sources, I would go M4300. And then if you have multiple of those and you need to aggregate that, then you go M4500. So I think a good rule of thumb is anything that's audio, M4250, anything that's a mix of audio and one gig video, probably M4250. Uh, if it's a bit faster than that, or you want to go SDVOE or 10 gig, then you go to the M4300, also when you need uh, full layer three. Uh, so it's complete routing, uh, for example, on the switch. Okay, we have our next right. question. Is there a dedicated application that you will be doing your routing or is it via a web GUI? And if yes, are there any additional costs involved? Yeah, so routing depends a bit on what you want to do. If it's on a, let's say an office network, there is already a router in the office, for example, uh, for internet access and you would hook up to that and that device would do the routing. If it's uh, purely a video network that's separated from the rest of the world, right? There's no internet access. There is no need for a router because you would just set static IP. You would manage your video sources and targets and that will work without having an external router. Now, if you need to program static routes, uh, you, you could either do that on layer three the switching or you program static routes on your existing router. And even our most affordable consumer routers have that option. Um, for the people that can see the camera behind me is a little Orbi, uh, it's a Orbi Pro uh, wireless mesh router that, that has that, right? I can just go in the user interface and program a few static routes. So a best practice is if you are in, let's say a mobile video application, for example, you do broadcast in a house of worship, you arrive there on a Sunday morning and they say, here is a cable with the internet. You don't know what you get yourselves into. Well, in that case, bring a simple router that you hook up to with the WAN port to that cable with internet, with the modem, and then do your settings on your own network. If you have complete control over the network, there's no need for that. Then you either use the existing facility or you set it up in an isolated form uh, without a separate router. 
because the switch can do DHCP. So the IP addresses can be handed out by the switch or by another switch or by an external router. You choose, right? That's a setting you can do in the uh, user interface. Thanks, Richard. Our next question, do you need a separate AV switch, for example, 30 input streams? Yeah, I think if you have 30 input streams, I would definitely do one or multiple switches. So it depends a bit. If these sources are close together, you can do it in one switch to avoid you know, uh, long cables. If it's on multiple sites or spread out over a building, you can group them per eight or 10 sources maybe. Uh, that would be the most affordable thing to do. And then uh, depending on what the bandwidth uh, necessity here is, if it's cameras that do a little bit of streaming, you know, a few cameras per switch, you can keep that on one gig. And then you interconnect the switches maybe with link aggregation, two, three or four gigabits, something like that. If all these sources are streaming constantly and you're switching, for example, to a production server, I would use a 10 gig uplink. So in that case, you would need three switches, <clears throat> all with one gig inputs, uh, 10, for example and then use 10 gig to go to a central switch where you hook up the uh, production server, VMAX, or uh, whatever you're using to aggregate that. So th that means three or four switches uh, of a small format. Now, if the sources are closer together, you can use a, uh, a 30 port, a 48 port switch, and do everything on that switch. But that means you have to run cables from each of those sources to that switch. Uh, so it's really, uh, well, call it a geographical problem. Okay, that seems to be the last of our questions. All right, in that case, um, I would like to thank everyone for staying on the line and uh, listening, uh, listening to me rant for uh, so long. Uh, appreciate the attention. Um, thanks, uh, Alzira and Graham and Toby for organizing this. And uh, you can reach out to us anytime, uh, proavdesign at netgear.com, or of course, contact um, uh, our business owner for South Africa here, uh, Toby van Schallekweek. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you for your time. Sorry, Dax. Um, we'll make the slides available. I'm sure Z will send out a link with the slides. And on there, you'll obviously find the, the email address for that Richard mentioned. And yeah, thank you, Richard. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, thank you to the panelists. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the people that have been uh, listening to this. And hopefully it's been as valuable to you as it was when we first heard about this uh, some weeks ago. Richard, thanks so much for your time. And we'll be doing this again soon. Thanks, guys. That's all Bye. then. Have a great day. Thanks all. Bye. Bye.